Now, I know what you're thinking. Is this really an ASMR video about somebody mixing e-juice, e-liquid, vape liquid, whatever you want to call it? And is the mental health of the person behind the camera in good shape? Uh, first question, yes. Second question, you should ask my psychiatrist. In any case, let's start. So I've got my little e-juice mixing case right here, my little box. First off, we've got the base liquid 50-50, propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. I think this is 500, 500 milliliters. I think so, yes. Zero milligrams of nicotine. Uh, they banned nicotine from these base liquids some time ago. Some people bought like really high concentrated uh, base liquids to, to mix that down, but I didn't. I have to use these nicotine shots. I'm going to mix some of this into the liquid as well. This right here is my little containment device for my little um, e-juice, e-liquid bottles. All are numbered. This one used to be a non-nicotine one, but it soon has to become um, just a regular bottle. Five little bottles that need a filling. Let's get those to the side. What else have we got in here? So, you're probably not interested, but I'm still going to get through some of these things. Here are the atomizers for my Aspire Clito. Here's the packaging of my Aspire Clito. Here we've got a different glass. It's a bit bigger than the standard one, but I I bought this because I wanted to have more liquid in there, but it turns out that um, the thing leaks with this mounted, so I didn't really have more liquid. I had more liquid uh, in my in my pockets on my hands, but it wasn't really all that effective when it comes to the nicotine consumption. Here I've got a spare battery. Uh, not really a spare battery, like it's it's an old one. This is, I think, a VTC4. Uh, yeah, Sony VTC4. It doesn't really hold a charge all too well anymore, but I uh, still keep it in here because it's basically special garbage and I haven't had the chance to get rid of this up until now. But the box is nice. Here is uh, one of these little mouthpieces. Here is uh, another one. <laughs> this is a, I think it, what's it called? Like, there's a gorilla on there. Gorilla bottle, I don't know. But it, it's nice, I bought this because I wanted to not mess around with these anymore. But, uh, oopsie. Turns out that um, one time, the first time I actually used it, I uh, squeezed some liquid into my e-cig, into my vape, and this entire tip came right out of there and uh, left a bit of a mess. So therefore I am not using this one anymore. Here I've got a syringe, one milliliter, one milliliter? I think it's a one milliliter syringe for insulin. Um, not using this for insulin. We've got another mouthpiece and uh, epitubes. I sometimes, because I always, um, I, I usually have the exact same order from the place that I order my, my liquid from. This, this and this. And sometimes they give me free samples of um, new, new aromas they've got. But um, for quite some time now, actually just using nicotine shots and regular base and no flavoring, just because um, it, it, it's a bit pricey sometimes. And it also isn't really all that nice. It, it smells a lot like what's on the box or on the bottle, but it doesn't really taste like that all too much. And it's just annoying. And it's annoying to mix. Then you actually have to use a syringe like this. This is a relic of those times. I do not use this anymore. But I keep these little epitubes. I like them. 
I'm not using them in the lab at the moment, luckily, but um, I'm fairly certain that I will at some point again. But I like those, those are nice. Epitubes are the best. Here we've got a Milo 3. What are they called in English actually? Atomizer, clearomizer, whatever. It uh, was a nice thing, but um, it really, really burned out the cords very, very quickly. Sealed this up again. It's okay, this one. So let's get these things out of the way. Get all of that jazz back in. All the good freebie stuff. Syringes, irritating, epitubes. I mean, this one really looks nice, but it gets quite hot, and um, the mouthpieces, it is quite thin, you know, quite. In the diameter is just a bit too small, and there's a lot of condensation running down it because, um, yeah, this vapor condensates, and when it's cold, it really does, and then everything leaks out the bottom of the bloody vape and I, I do not like that. This is also one of these relics from the time when I used to mix things with uh, flavors. I uh, do not do that anymore but I use this to measure some things. Not really accurately but I, but I did measure things. So we take some toilet paper now. Uh, why do I take toilet paper? Well it is cheaper than a kitchen towel. I want to have something to, you know, take up excess vape liquid, excess propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. What I do now is when I unscrew these, there's always a bit of, a bit of juice on top. So I wipe that up and I separate this very needle tip from the thing and uh, set them onto the towel. One is fine, not much on there. It sometimes is, it is usually is this this entire liquid mixing thing. It usually is just annoying, but sometimes it's quite relaxing, you know. Right now the wind outside is a bit uh, a bit stiff, so you might hear some wind noise from the outside. I do like that though. I love I love it when it is really stormy outside when I want to go to sleep, you know, with the night comes over the land, the rain pounds on your window and your windowsill, a little thunderstorm in the distance and I can just fade off into the distance of the dreaming world. Love that. Unfortunately though, the rain always comes when uh, when I've actually woken up already and when I want to go on my bike and uh, ride to uni or somewhere else where I need to go, then it always starts to rain. I barely ever have the luck to experience nighttime rain. Okay, let's take one of these nicotine shots. And this one right here is a 20 milligram one. Yeah, 20 milligram per milliliters, 10 milliliters contain 200. The other ones here, those are 18 milligrams. So this one's uh, in the final mixture, a bit more than 3 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. I usually have 3 milligrams per milliliter of nicotine. So, um, I, wanted, I was at, at 1 milligram at some point, but something happened then I kind of had to go back up again. I'm not really going to talk about what happened. So, what I do then is, there are 10 milliliters of fluid in here. I put 5 milliliters in each of these bottles and then I fill them up to about there. And then I'm usually about, about 30 milliliters of content inside of here. And um, to calculate how much nicotine you've got in there, you just take the milligrams per milliliters Take them by five, because we take five of this, and uh, then you divide that amount. Then you've got the milligram amount that you actually got in there, the content of the entire thing, and then you divide that by 30. And then uh, with my 18 milligram things, I think I get, uh, 
yeah, then I get to three milligrams per milliliter. So now I have to see, it's it's weird to do that with the lamp. I usually have the lamp behind that and, and take a look at where it is. So now I have to, to kind of judge how much liquid I've actually pressed out of this already. Usually works fine though, a bit more. Yeah, that's fine. Now I set this aside, or do I actually fill this up already? No, let's fill this up already. Push these ones in the back a little. This as well. Now comes the tricky part. Actually pouring this into the little, the little flask without spilling everything. I can't no, I have to look besides the camera, I can't do the through the uh, viewfinder. Can you see it? They... Yeah, you can see it quite well actually. I used to use a, a funnel for this step, but with uh, the 50-50 liquid, you don't really need it. So, uh, just, you just have to be a bit careful and uh, get used to how this... Um, how liquid, how viscous this is, and very soon you'll get the hang of it and do not need a funnel anymore. Now we pop this back on. Take another little toilet tissue paper. Wipe this off. And put the cap back on. With the, some of these bottles, there's a bit of leakage, like all the time, doesn't matter how tight I close it, it's, uh, that just comes after a while. I think I'm, I'm using these bottles, these exact same ones, for when did I start vaping? I quit smoking, I think, in 2017, January, February 2017. I'm not sure anymore, but um, I'm using these for quite some time now. I used to buy ready-made liquids, um, but they got more and more expensive after some time. And um, until that point I always was reusing those little bottles. But those are PET bottles usually. This one right here is uh, polypropylene. And polypropylene is a lot, a lot, almost not squishier, but it's a lot softer. And it's a lot more durable because it doesn't get these these um, crack points after a while when you press them um, at the same point every goddamn time. So probably probably in bottles PPs are better for this sort of application. Usually I set this on top of my little lamp right here. If you can see this, I turn I, I kind of turn this around, flip this, and then I sit set this right here and it sits there quite nicely. I do that because um, there's quite a bit of warmth coming from the lamp and that way we increase the movement of the little uh, molecules in here. And I usually do this with the, the, the first one, number one and number two, because those get used, of course, the first. Because okay. that way I have a little bit better mixed product ready to go. With these other ones it doesn't really matter, at some point it just completely mixes perfectly after a while, but um, the first few hours, the first day or so, you know, it takes some time to really mix up properly. So uh, you've clicked on this video and you see that there is ASMR typed in the title. And that's really what this is. We're going to fill up all of these right now. <laughs> Sorry. Now we can completely empty this one. No, one more. We want to be frugal with a liquid rate. That's enough. Off you go into the trash. Okay. Pour some more base. How much have I got left? Yeah, I can get this one and another batch. Yeah, don't have to order a new one. 
not at this point. That would be quite embarrassing if I actually... Usually I have no problem doing this without any spillage, but um, I think today this is going to be a bit different. I mean, of course, I'm recording this right now. Of course, something is going to go wrong. I won't cut out the mishaps, though. At least that's what I'm saying right now. There will be like three people watching this, so who cares? I mean, who's gonna watch? And then what is this gonna be like? A 20, 30 minute video about somebody filling up e-juice bottles? Nobody is. I'm the kind of person who does that. But um, I think I'm a special one. At least that's what my mama always told me. Now we take one of these. These are, as you can see, 18 milligrams per milliliter. So here we've got a true 3 milligrams per milliliter. I mean, I used to also measure this as well to get like exactly 5 milliliters, but why? It's gonna average out at some point. And uh, this way I'm making a lot less of a mess. And I haven't got one of these little 5 milliliter syringes anymore. Like this one right here, I would have to take 5 drawers of that for a single bottle. That's a lot of drawers for 5 of those. It takes some time and there is always a little, uh, just a little bit of spillage. This way it's uh, a lot cleaner and quicker. Sometimes when I have to do this you know, in the middle of the week, uh, I'm very thankful that I've switched my methods. It's fine. You see, now I'm, now I'm shaking. Now I'm shaking. Look at this. Pathetic. We a, we want to have a steady stream of thick juice. I mean, this is about right. I don't care if this is one decimal more concentrated than it should be. Who cares? It's my lungs. Those are my alveolas, not yours. What is it about with these um, jewels that you've got in America? Like everybody's talking about those and the weird thing is all those studies that come out, those are apparently mostly for jewels, but we don't have jewels here in Europe. At least I have never seen one in, in the wild, I guess. I cannot remember seeing one in the wild. Maybe I did, but I forgot. They're like weird little smoking alternatives nowadays. There are these um, electric tobacco cigarettes. We've got like a tobacco mix, which kind of looks like hash. But, you know, it, it's weird and it just gets heated up. Apparently it's healthier, but I mean this right here isn't healthy either. You're putting something into your lungs that uh, definitely shouldn't be there. I don't think your lungs are designed for propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin. I might be wrong though. But it's, I think it's a, a lot healthier than smoking regular cigarettes. I mean, in cigarettes, regular ones, you know, we've got... What are those? There was always this kind of sentence that I had in my mind. It was like 80 or 90 confirmed carcinogenic um, substances in cigarette smoke. And the thing is, you cut that down dramatically by 
just uh, keeping the temperature of those vapes very low. I vape at, uh, I used to vape at uh, I think like 60 watts or something. And now it, it, it doesn't make any sense. I'm going to show you my vape in a, in a minute when I'm finished with the last one. I used to vape at like 60, 65, something like that. Which is uh, within the range of the Aspire Cleta. But I, c I could feel everything getting very hot and uh, I didn't want really to have all that uh, formaldehyde in my lungs. So I started to go down with the wattage a little bit. Now I'm at 40. In the meantime I vaped on the temperature control mode. I used the stainless steel coils just because they last longer. And of course you can do TC vaping with those. But I don't do that anymore just because the battery of my vape is slowly starting to degrade and uh, it, it, it has some trouble doing that multitasking. I'm just keeping the temperature at the at the same amount and dialing things up and down. It doesn't really work all that well anymore. Maybe I just have to get a new battery. Maybe not. I don't know. But now I have about 40 watts, which is way below the 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 range that is recommended. But it stays a lot cooler, and I uh, don't have that burned cotton smell and taste in my mouth as quickly, which is good. I like to keep these colds for a long time, for as long as possible, actually. You can take a look at the puff counter as well. Goes back in there. I think I'm at 25,000 or something with this coil. I mean, a puff sometimes like just to keep the temperature low and get just a little bit of that vapor into my lungs. And uh, that way the, the cotton doesn't burn as quickly because there's a little bit of time to get re-soaked. Just a fraction of a second, but apparently it's enough. And the lower temperature also plays into it, of course. Let's get the base closed up first. No need for a mishap at this point. We're through already. <laughs> I thought this was going to take a bit longer. This is quicker than I thought. Still. So I'll have to put this on the lamp in a few minutes when I stop this video, this recording. But for now I'm going to put everything in its little place. This is just an Amazon carton. I I always bought at some point and I just wanted to have something to put the bloody things in and I went all out on the tape. This is the, the more expensive file tape. Nice tape from uh, 3M. But um, overkill for this purpose. <laughs> but I just just did this. I think it was I think it's nice to have a little space for every one of those. And whenever one is empty, when it's empty I put it head down first. And then I know when everything is head down, then uh, I have to re mix, refuel, top up the fuel station. Usually I have one of with one of those with me all the time and so uh, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'll get my my vape real quick. So this is it, the magic stick. It's uh, an Aspire, no, a Joytech, what is that, Joytech, I think Joytech EVIC V2 Mini. It's got just one battery in here, this is a VTC6. An Aspire Cleto up here, SS 316L, 0.4 ohms. It's good for 55 to 65 watts, so I'm 15 watts below what it's rated for. 
There's some nicks in there. I'm using this for I think two or three years now. Let's see, this one right here is not from dropping it. I think the, just the paint here is a bit rubbish. So there's some kind of moisture going beneath the paint and bulging that up. The aluminium oxidizes and the paint chips. I'm thinking of because it's just the tip right here. This is from dropping it or tipping over at some point. This as well, but this is very dominant, this kind of splattering on just the tail or back cover. I'm thinking about completely sanding that down and uh, repainting it or just give it a brushed aluminium or brushed whatever style and put some clear coat on top. Might look nice. Maybe. These magnets right here, they all came out at some point. This one's broken. Is this one broken? No. But this one's broken. Everything, every one of those is uh, super glued back in. <laughs> so, just to keep in mind when you've got one of those, because when you slap them on like this, sometimes there's just a bit too much force and they get pulled out of their little holding containment uh, nook. Well, whatever. The bottom is quite nasty. A bit of wear and tear though is not all too bad, I guess. So, we want to take a look at the little puff counter. I've got it always set to this, just a little hole for the air, not too much. I always wanted to get a mouth, uh, mouth too long clearomizer, but I, in the end, never did. I just didn't want to spend another 30, 40 euros to get another one while this is working perfectly fine. I've got this set to the time, 40 watts, 0.43 ohms. It's not really what it's, it doesn't matter. You can cycle through. This is the temperature mode. Always have it at like 210 to 230 degrees centigrade, degrees Celsius, at 60 watts. Oh, there we go. About 27,000 puffs already. Wrong thing, wrong thing. There's the power setting. I can actually, I can, I can use this one as well, but I just like to have the clock. I do not know what this, what this does. No idea. And uh, no idea either. I just leave it on this because when you go outside for a quick vape, you don't have to take a look at your phone or on your watch. You can just you have this one in the hand already and take a quick glance at the at the old clock. I want to get this one replaced, this casket, but I cannot really find it anywhere on the internet. You can always uh, only buy the entire thing. And I think there's only... This one, I think, is not really available anymore. At least I can't see it in any online shops, vape shops. There's only a Cleto Pro or something like that, which is a bit taller and got a different top thing up here. Yeah. Anyways, I think this is it for this little video. Greetings to the two people that actually watched this video up until this point. And um, maybe I'm going to do something like this again at some point. But um, this has been a long time coming. And now it's finally, it is finally done. And I'm glad that I did it. And I'm already all set and topped up again. Okay, I'm going to see you soon. Until then. Goodbye.